Hi, Peter McLeod here from aardvarkmcleod.com. Uh, I wanted to show you this afternoon how to set up a GT reel. A lot of people ask me how I set up my gear. Um, so I thought that I would run through what I do, make sure the backing's on tight. What I really want to talk about is, is spooling up um, large arbor reels for giant trevally fishing or tarpon fishing or, or something like that. Um, in all these instances, especially these days when we are using 60 to 80 pound braid, it's absolutely vital that it's put on under serious tension. Because if you don't do that, what happens is, is as the fish is fighting and pulling hard, the backing will actually cut into itself if it's loose and it can cause a jam, break the, break the fish off. So it's really, really important that it's put on tight, it's put on under pressure so that you have no uh, gaps or areas where the line can cut down through. So in this instance, at the moment, um, I'm going to talk about um, backing types and then I'm going to talk about the equipment I'm using here. So this is an Osprey line winding machine. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one here in the office, but otherwise you can go to your local pro shop um, or tackle shop and get them to do it for you. It's, um, they are quite an investment. There are smaller ones that you can get. Um, this is a particularly good tabletop one that I find uh, does the job extremely well. At the moment it's spooled up with uh, ordinary 30 pound Dacron from some of the other salmon lines that we've been doing recently. So I'm going to take that off, put that to one side. Now this is 34 kilo tough line, um, or sort of 80, 80 pound breaking strain spinning braid. Now we've been using that for certainly giant trevally fishing mostly because of the abrasion resistance against the coral, not for pull strength because no one's going to break um, 30 or 40 pounds on a straight pull, but what it is very good is abrasion resistance. So as it's getting carved over the coral at distance, you've got a good opportunity to actually land that fish. So we're going to pop that on here. And uh, this line winder's got a particularly useful gadget on it, in that it actually has a, a measure on it, which actually can count off the amount of uh, backing that I'm putting on the reel, so I'm going to set that to zero. Set that on there, so that's just literally going to run on that. Now the reel I'm going to spool up today uh, is a T-ball Gulfstream, which I'm doing for uh, uh, a client. And uh, one thing that I always notice with a lot of these uh, T-balls is you find them with the red sticker still attached to it. That's only sti that sticker is only there to show you where the backing groove is. So actually the first thing you should do is take that sticker off because what can happen with the salt is the salt water can get underneath it and you can get a pocket of corrosion. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to then attach my spool to my line winding machine. That goes on there like that. Get a nice tight fit. Turn it on. Uh, this particular client in question is left hand wind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the line off of here and I'm going to wrap it once, twice around the spool and from this position I'm going to take the line out, pinch it with my finger and then I'm going to wrap it back over itself to make a D loop and then I'm going to put this line through here six times. One, two, three, Four, five, and six. Okay, so then I'm going to slowly pull that tight, and then I'm going to feed that down onto the spool itself until it's nice and tight. I'm going to pull on the tag end to make sure the knot's tight, and then I'm going to seat it right down on the spool. Okay. Then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just cut, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a tag on there. Okay, so from that point, we've got the line securely attached to the reel, and then we can get ready to spool the line on. So now we're ready to start spooling, so we're going to turn this on, switch it onto left hand wind down here. I have a foot pedal, 
and it's very very important to maintain extreme pressure on this reel so what I'm going to do is take up the slack until it's tight and I'm going to put my cloth on it so that I can put some tension on it. Put this little gadget right on here and that's going to allow me to feed the line onto the reel so I'm going to grab the spool I'm going to put some pressure on and I'm going to start feeding it uniformly backwards and forwards is going to come right up to the ed edge but without catching you don't want it to catch on the on the outside of the the reel cage because otherwise that can also create problems especially if you're winding on loosely in a difficult situation say you're wandering across the flats and you've got to wind up and move on somewhere else quite often we're not always quite as careful as we would be normally to make sure that our line goes across the spool in, a, in an orderly fashion that can cause problems when you're trying to pull line off in a hurry so I always try to make sure that my reels are filled to the correct uh, depth. So at this point, now we're going to move over to create a big loop in the end of the backing. And the best way to do this is to use a bit. So once I've spun it around, as it comes up towards my wrist, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring my feet into play. I'm going to put the loop over the inside of my feet and I'm going to pull outwards. What that's going to do is tighten up this this strength here. So at this point I'm going to separate my two loops. So I've got one loop which is the loop that you had before and one which is the other one that comes up towards the fly line and I'm going to pull I'm going to pull this up so it's really tight. And then I'm going to let go gently and I'm going to run that extra section down to the end. At this point I'm going to do one half hitch going this way and then one half hitch going this way and that just locks the whole thing in place. So now what we have is a doubled up loop and we have a 100% knot strength on our bimini. This tag end here we're just going to clip off. I'm take my scissors, I'm 
I'm just going to snip that off there. And this end, just to make it a bit neater and a bit tidier, what I tend to do is take this loop and double it back on itself. So there you're going to do a little bit of a kind of whip finish. And there are easy ways of doing this. I tend to just use a loop of the material I've just chopped off. And I hold that up against it. And I give it one, two, three wraps. And then I just put it back through the loop that I've just made. And then I'm going to take the tag ends, I'm going to pull it back on itself and pop it out. So what that's done is cinch it right back, right back on itself so that it's not going anywhere. It's like a second locking knot. Just use my teeth quickly and pull that tight. Bad advice, I know, but pliers, sort of pliers would be better. Just to tighten that up. And I'm going to cut that tag off too. I always leave a little bit of a tag on there just in case it's going to go somewhere. So that's the really important thing, is you've got a nice big wide loop that you can pass right over the top of the fly reel. So if you're changing out lines quickly on a loop to loop, you don't have to worry about taking the reel off the rod or any of those kind of things, especially when you're standing up to your waist in salt water. You can quickly put that over the reel and you're ready to go and you just thread the new fly line up and, and you're ready to fish again. Well, I hope that uh, video was of use. Um, please click like if you, uh, if you enjoyed it and please subscribe to our channel. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks.